when I was coming up, I remember meeting people and getting wanting their autographs. This is what I did once when I was a young man. I waited in line myself to get an autograph from the band Garbage. I had a crush on Shirley Manson. I still do. I remember uh, I did stand in line once to sign, uh, to get Dan Quayle to sign my uh, newspaper article. I waited in line at Ozzest, 03, to meet Shadows Fall. I got one from Billy Sheehan a couple years ago, even though I've met him before a few times just on a personal level. He's just one of my very favorite bass players, so he was doing a signing and he had some really cool posters there and I said, hey, you know, could you sign one of these for me? I got Mark the Animal, in, in which I just saw upstairs. I was waving to him, and they, they looked at me like I was a, a goofball. And J.J. French what, came to a music store in my hometown. I got their autograph and my picture with them. A couple other times, like, my wife has wanted to get autographs from people, and I'll wait in line with her. We've waited for Ronnie James Dio, which, of course, I'm happy to meet him, too, because he's one of the best heavy metal singers of all time. I was standing in line for an autograph once from uh, Mark Tremonti, but... What? what? Is that funny? Are you serious? No, I'm not serious. But if he was here, I would stand in line. I also met uh, Juliana Hatfield a couple times and terrified her. There are, there's actually a picture of her and me, and I look a little bit like this. And she looks like this. I got uh, Kirk Hammett and Lars Ulrich's autograph and Eddie Van Halen's autograph when I was younger. And that's, that's probably about it. When I was young, I met Henry Rollins, and that was really big for me because uh, I read all his books and listened to Black Flag a ton and loved the Rollins band. So when I met him, I just had a stack of his books and all the CDs and just went, I like your stuff. And he was very polite and said, thank you. I love to sign autographs. I love to meet the fans. They could stop me and take photos and, and have me sign autographs anytime. I don't think me signing something in ink, I would rather stretch their anus or do other things to them that I think that they would be more appreciative of. People that you listen to when you were a teenager, those are going to be the ones that you really get excited about. Even if you're a huge fan of somebody later in life, it still doesn't quite have the same impact as during those formative years. Anytime I meet any of the ones that I looked up to at that point in my life, they're the ones I I get the most excited about meeting. We're hanging out with Vinnie Paul. He came to the show, and when he, I saw him, I was at the merch table, and the merch table was outside the venue in, in, in the hotel lobby, and uh, he was there, and I saw him walking up, I'm like, damn, that's Vinnie Paul. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, dude, that's Vinnie Paul. Sure shit it was, and he comes to the show, we all hanging out backstage, and uh, he invites us to go hang out at this bar, and there's this cover band playing who are really killer. So we just all go back there, and we turn it into our own private party, and then, Vinny gets on drums and they're doing this Quiet Riot cover and Chuck Billy's singing on stage and he invites me up there to start singing with him and on this little ass stage to like maybe like 50 people and I'm singing Bang Your Head and Vinny Paul's right next to this. This is Vinny Paul, like you know what I mean? Like yeah, I flipped a nut, I was nervous as like it was like I was playing my first concert again. It was ridiculous. But you know what? But it's just because I have so much respect for him. It's not because he's this icon, it's just because of what he has done as a musician. I just respect so much. Yeah.